I want to, first of all, take a look at this word Hosanna and how that applies to our daily life. How this applies to us right now. And then I want to throw out a caution, um, kind of against political dependence. But the first thing that I want to talk about is this Hosanna. As I was reading this, this kind of, I was kind of fixated on it. Like I couldn't, I couldn't get away from it. And it's this idea of, like I said, those two things. Lord, save us now, and our Savior has come. And I start looking at our lives, and we are, according to the Bible, we're all born into sin. Every person that has ever lived is born into sin. And just like the, Jew, the Jews were captive to foreign lands, and they weren't able to free themselves, everyone in this room is born into sin. And you are not able to free yourself. You are not able to free yourself. And let's just take a look for a second at what kind of master, what kind of ruler sin is. Sin holds you captive to fear. Sin holds you captive to hurt. Sin holds you captive to anger. This is the kind of master that sin is. Sin holds you captive to emptiness. Sin holds you captive to death. The end result of your bondage to sin is destruction. That's the kind of master that you're under. And until that we understand that, if, you, if we don't understand that that's the kind of master sin is, we'll never scream, Lord, save me now. And I think the worst part about sin as our master, about being bondage to sin, is not what it holds you to, but it's what it keeps you from. The opposite of being in bondage to sin is being, having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that frees you up from that bondage. In Jesus Christ, there's hope. In Jesus Christ, there's healing. In Jesus Christ, there's restoration. In Jesus Christ, there's forgiveness. And that is a much better master than sin. But I think right now in this room, there's, there's, there's two kinds of folks. There's kinds of folks who are in bondage to sin. And you do not hate that sin enough. It is not disgusting enough to you to want to leave it. And so you'll, you'll stay in bondage to sin as long as that is your attitude. Or if you try to fix yourself. If you try to escape under the weight of sin on your own efforts, you won't happen. It won't happen. It will crush you. You will stay in bondage to sin if that's your approach. The second type of person is the person who screams to God, save me now, because I can't do it. Save me because I can't fix myself. And, and here's the reality. Whether you're here today you, and that's your heart's cry for the first time, or whether you've been a Christian for 40 years, your heart's cry has always got to be, Lord, save me now because I can't do this. Lord, save me for myself every single day, because every single day I try to look for myself, I fail. And so as Kyle Chip was saying earlier, when we were singing these songs, that's where the second part of Hosanna comes in. If you have never, ever trusted Jesus to forgive your sins, then the second part of Hosanna makes no sense from no, no sense to you. Screaming and shouting in joy to a Savior, if you don't know what He saved you from, then you're just going through motions. And I'm not a very, I don't know what you call it, charismatic person or whatever, but sometimes in my heart, like I, I just want to jump and shout and scream, and, but I don't. But it's because I know what God saved me from. I know what a jerk I am inside. I know how much I offend God. And if he doesn't save me, I have no hope. The same is true for all of us. If you depend on yourself to get out from underneath your sin, you're in trouble. Um, and the second thing I want to hit on briefly, and this is something that I uh, I wrestled with sharing, because I'm not sure how popular it is, but I, I was okay because I was talking to Vanessa last night about it. She says, you know, if God's telling you to say it, then say it. And last night as I was finishing up editing the two-minute sermon, I heard Andy talking about it, so I think I'm okay. Um, I think the political climate that we talked about in this passage plays 
uh, a huge role in the passage, and I think it's relevant for us today. I think a lot of us in here are probably not happy with the way our political climate is in this country. We don't like the way things are going. But I'll tell you what the answer is not in. The answer is not in policies, it's not in politics, it's not in a certain politician. The answer alone is in Jesus Christ. And as we look at this passage, we see these people shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. And it's not really clear what happened to these people, but when Jesus was crucified, there wasn't many people around. When they saw what type of king Jesus came to be, first of all, the donkey is very symbolic of peace. If Jesus came to be a warrior king at that time, what people rode were like these big, huge, strong horses. I don't know what exactly what they're called. Andy probably does. Ravens. But Jesus came on a donkey, which that in itself was a message to these people that, hey, I'm willing to be king, but this is the type of king I'm going to be. I'm going to be a king that brings peace. That's humble. I'm not going to violently overthrow the Roman government. And so when people started seeing that Jesus was going to die this death, they started scattering. They didn't want anything to do with him. They wanted a political Jesus. They wanted a Jesus that would help them accomplish their political agenda. And I think in America right now, we've got an election coming up. Things in this country get to a political fervor. Everything is about politics. And my caution for us as Christians, and how do we navigate this time, is 